Oh. Maybe we should just have that all here and then they'll go away. We don't have any food, so hopefully we're not a target. We have an apple in my bag. Lady of it, have We've got no pet seagull, just skin it. So it'd be funny, he nearly fell over. Irrelevant. Um, I got a random new from my Nars door, I'll give you the key. <laughs> Basically, George is really smart. I know, I'm so clever, I got so many Ds. While you were doing your first year, I just did nothing. Hello, I'm Georgia. And I'm Ellen. And we are the ones that roll. Welcome to our podcast, where we discuss disability and more. When we're not eating popcorn and watching High School Musical, because we don't do that much. Today, we're talking about university. Georgia is just about to start her second year mm-hmm. at university, studying... Multimedia Broadcast Journalism. Um, and I am just about to start my first year studying English Literature. What was your experience like this year with not just getting accommodation but the whole applying and starting up getting ready for uni process? So I actually applied second year of college. I took a year off. I just went to all the open days with everybody else and applied just like everybody else. And then at the last minute, just before I sent my application in, I freaked out and clicked defer a place for a year because I couldn't have it. And here we are. And so this year has been spent sorting out my accommodation at IDSA and help with personal care, which has been interesting. I find it interesting that you deferred and gave yourself the extra year to find everything out and make sure everything was right and in place because everyone said to me basically it might have been easier for me to defer, but why you say you were anxious? So that's why you were pushed to defer. I also felt anxious, but I felt like that pushed me to not want to defer. Then I would just just be doing it, and I'd yeah. be just getting it done. And yeah, I think that's just a personal thing because my instinct when I'm anxious is to just run away from the thing. Yeah. Even now, I just knew that I'd have support there if I had a problem once I started. Well, your experience was kind of different anyway because you live at home still. Yeah, but that wasn't the plan because. No. But it turned out that I was rejected it mainly because I was only 40 minutes away. That is a drive that I could do. Um, And I do, and I have done. But it does mean it takes two hours out of my day to get there and back. Yeah. um, And things like that. But also um, the whole independent living was to make me more independent, which I don't have. Like, I, I do it to some degree at home. I come and go as I please and stuff as long as I can arrange it. But it's it's totally different to living at home. Yeah. No matter how independent I'm made at home. Um, yeah, there are still things that, like... Well, for me, the idea of... This is what I told everybody. The idea of taking a year off was to become kind of more independent at home. So yeah. So you wouldn't feel as big. Um, yeah. But then even that, like, there are still things that your mum... But like mums do, just because like, well, like yeah. for anybody, even able-bodied people, like they would still cook or do the laundry and that kind of thing. I have a PA that, if I lived on my own, could help me with things that mum does, like the um, putting things in the washing machine and things like that. That yeah. I can't necessarily reach down to do or haven't even practiced or anything like that. So it's not like I'd be stuck, but it's it was the experience that I was kind of hoping for. But looking back, I do kind of wish I did did defer um not enough to like really regret my life but but looking back i feel like it would have helped a bit to as you say to get that independence and find a place of my own in time for this year or something you know yeah but um no i like it how it is in terms of the disability services that your uni provides Mm -hmm. what what have they been like in the first year generally it was okay like when i first started uh you, you go through that kind of um, that that review of disability supplies that you need to help you, which isn't really like it's it's uni, but it's sort of the specific uni kind of thing. Um, and that was okay. It took longer than expected to sort out. And even now, I haven't had any training for the software I've been given. I've just kind of no. I've just practiced it on my own. But that's that's mainly miscommunication. Yeah. Um, but everything that I do. I, I do use what I've been given, like I have a um, voice to type system, yep. 
which I use, which I just learned how to do the basics of that anyway, so that's fine. It also felt very brutal, and this isn't like the problem, it's not a problem, it's just a faff, and I think it's to do with people trying to like abuse the system. I had to basically prove that I needed all the stuff I had asked for. Um, I mean, they didn't do any tests, but I needed like a doctor's note and stuff like that. I guess we can't know how it affects I mean, they they were very accommodating. They're like, tell us what issues you have, um, and we'll try and work out a way for it. For example, because I didn't get my technology and stuff at uh, the week that I started uni, because of the long process and stuff. Yeah. So they said, okay, for the first week until you, uh, first few weeks until you get your equipment, we'll give you a, um, a scribe, so someone to write your notes for you. Okay. I know you haven't started, so yeah, uni I mean, support is different. So but. far it's been good. I had a day where the head of services, the disability services, invited me up. So I got to see my room and I pick, because obviously I have to judge which one is best for accessibility. So I got to go up and see that and then he just went through anything that I'd need help with. Um, kind of things that I haven't really thought about. Uh, like trips and things, like what would I do, or if there's a work Facebook module. Obviously it's quite difficult to judge when you've not actually been there. So we'll have to do an update episode. Um, have you had, this is something I've been thinking about, have you had any trips recently? When I went on a trip to Houses of Parliament, it was make your own way there. Yeah. Um, and what I did was I said to my support who I wasn't think working... What, I think that, what, that's what most uni trips are, actually. Yeah, anyway, um, okay. this is more of just a point against uni as opposed to disability related. To make my own way, I said to my support who wasn't working with me um, day to day anymore at this point, but um, I was still very much in contact with if I did have a, an issue. And I messaged her and said, I've got this trip coming up. Um, is there a way that you can assist me? And we arranged for, she got the train, which was a few stops before me, to me, and then meeting me at my station and carrying on to London. Yep. Um, and then we'd walk from station to Parliament. Um, so that was all good and everything. But I feel like this isn't like um, to do with my uni or my course or the trip itself. But I just generally think unis should, I mean, we pay a fee of quite a lot. Um, each year, I feel like the same with school and college, they should provide a, a group travel because um, that way it's inclusive. Just they should have the option of group travel. Like, yeah, I mean, either a complete group travel or, or you know, I will provide something for people with disabilities. Yeah, I just feel like it should be more of a level. Um, inclusion so like if you were um, able if it was easier for you really to make a independent travel great yeah. just you say but then everyone has a basis on that they can then take yeah did you have any exams in your first year um, my, my decision on the course um, was based around not having too many exams yeah and they said when it gets to it we'll look at so many different ways that we can get around your problems um but the same decision i made with college was um there was no exams in that um and to be honest i enjoy that with my topic anyway with media it's good to actually do it um but also because exams i've discovered i just so struggle with gcse's um I would never go back to and everyone's like oh yeah. the GCSEs are the easiest like examinations that you can do you yeah know? knowledge and, wise they are but but, but yeah for me I felt like that was going to be the worst because I it had to be exam severe anxiety of the big room with everyone in yeah um and you know the anxiety of even getting into the table around all the very small gaps between the tables you know what yeah. I mean yeah um, so all of the big room anxiety, all of the scribing issue with my hands for like English, which was two and a half hours. So when it came to making my uni choices, I didn't want to have the fear that my scribe was going to make a mistake on my behalf. Yeah, my wrists tie quite easily, um, so I get more time. Um, I 
kind of went between having a laptop and this, like the correct amount of time. See, I had a laptop for coursework when we had to do that essay about um, of mice and men, and it died on me three times, even plugged in. Yeah, that's the thing. They so never, I refused. The laptops at school never worked, so I didn't trust them properly. So in the end, I just had 25% extra time and did it myself. Um, but yeah, university, I've kind of said that I had extra time. I like, I quite like writing in exams, like doing it myself. But they've offered me a separate room as well for anxiety and just because I need the extra time, which I found really helpful at college when I had the, extra, the spare room. I think because it gets more serious as well, it, you've got more to rely on. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to have to worry about the setup. One thing I want to conclude with really is when people when you tell someone you're going to uni and they're like oh you're going to uni oh that's so good well done it's like what so i'm disabled so you think that i can't manage that oh. i'm all there upstairs and um I'm there upstairs. <laughs> well i'm not all upstairs because you know stairs are my weakness and even people that do have more um mental struggles loads of them go to university yeah um I mean, it's normally older people that do say it to me, and I guess that's because in their generation, uni wasn't so common. Yeah. But it's still quite offensive when someone's like, oh, so you, you go to uni? I heard yes. somebody the other day tell me that I was really courageous for going. Just I was like, oh, I know you're like being nice, but also... I mean, I never know what to say. And I've said, oh yeah, I'm kind of glad um, I didn't have to worry about getting into uni because I exceeded my, my college <laughs> grace that I needed. I just think people need to realise that, phys- uh, in our case specifically, physically, how should that hinder disability? I mean, yes, it means more of a struggle. Like, And I understand when people are like, really, you, you want to go to uni even though it's so much more hassle for you individually? Like, I get that. Yeah. But that shouldn't make me not want to do it. Thank you for listening to this episode of our podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time we do an upload as we have future podcasts lined up. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at ones that roll and tweet us any thoughts. Also, you can leave a comment in the comment section down below, giving us any feedback or even any ideas of future things that you want us to discuss. See you next time.